Welcome to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. First of all, folks, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy early St. Patrick's Day to all of our uh, friends from the old sod out there. You know who can use a little luck of the Irish? Donald Trump. Because uh, the House of Representatives is after him, okay? Like they're after a leprechaun's pot of gold. <laughs> and they're dotting the I's and they are spilling the tea. <laughs> First victim, former Trump attorney and cartoon meerkat, <laughs> Michael Cohen. Monk. <laughs> Cohen originally told Congress that he never sought a pardon from the president, but this week in closed testimony, he revealed that the president's advisors dangled the possibility of a pardon last year through a back channel with Giuliani. Of course, the dangling may not have been on purpose. At his age, I'm guessing Rudy's back channel is mostly dangle. <laughs> and... Uh... <laughs> Get that. Get that image lodged up there, and <laughs> Cohen has kept the receipts on this one, specifically two 2018 emails from Giuliani's buddy Robert Costello, who wrote, Cohen could sleep well tonight because he had friends in high places. First of all, the phrase, sleep well, is never reassuring. <laughs> Not even in the mob-themed children's book, Sleep Well, Moon. <laughs> but... That you've got friends in high places sure sounds like a pardon dangle to me. But Costello, who wrote that email, called Cohen's story utter nonsense, explaining this statement, sleep well tonight, you have friends in high places, was a tongue-in-cheek reference to a Garth Brooks song. What? That, that song is called Friends in Low Places, <laughs> which is already a tongue-in-cheek reference to the actual expression friends in high places. <laughs> It's like Costello is saying, I've written a parody of the Weird Al song, I Love Rocky Road. It's called, I Love Rock and Roll. <laughs> it's tongue in cheek. <laughs> Costello. <laughs> Thank you. Weird Al fans. Big Weird Al fans here tonight. Costello said, here's the deal. Costello said he was simply trying to offer comfort to a client whose state of mind was highly disturbed and had suggested to us that he was suicidal. How could you tell? Whenever I see him, I want to add a hotline number underneath. <laughs> Stay strong, Mike. And Cohen wasn't the only one giving secret testimony. Congress also heard from former acting attorney general and Lex Luthor pretending to be Clark Kent, Matt Whitaker. <laughs> Whitaker gave... <laughs> delayed reaction. <laughs> delayed reaction. <laughs> Whitaker gave closed-door testimony to the House Judiciary Committee, and as soon as the door opened, we learned everything he said from committee chair and fun grandpa who teaches naughty limericks, <laughs> Jerry Nadler. Last month, it was reported that Trump asked Whitaker to put an ally in charge of the Cohen investigation. Rumor has it, Trump wanted to appoint his closest ally, Kim Jong, un attorney at law. <laughs> yes. Have you been injured? in a labor camp? Call now. <laughs> Putting a crony in as U.S. attorney over an investigation that you're the subject of is called, um, obstruction of justice. <laughs> but that's nothing new for Trump. If he doesn't obstruct justice every half hour, he gets an alert from his Apple Watch, time to stand and undermine our democracy <laughs> for one minute. <laughs> gotta, gotta close those rings. Gotta close those. Oh, yeah, close the loop. Uh -huh. Now, Nadler says that in private testimony, Whitaker did not deny talking to Trump about Cohen. So he didn't confirm, but he didn't deny. What did he do? <laughs> did he phrase it like a riddle? Answer first my questions three about my time as the acting AG. Ha ha ha! Ha ha! Poof! Ha ha But investigating Trump is not easy, according to Connecticut representative and Louis Anderson playing Ted Kennedy. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> John Larson. Larson complained, 
When have we ever had a presidency when the news cycle is dictated in the morning by what he tweets? You're working overtime to make your case, and it's like pushing the bean uphill. You realize what a difficult job it is in this environment. First of all, cry me a river, Larson. Try making it funny. Second, <laughs> pushing a bean uphill? <laughs> pushing the bean uphill. Is that a thing? <laughs> Investigating Trump is like trying to get milk from a stone, but there's plenty of fish in the mall. <laughs> and the early bird catches the syphilis. <laughs> and New York Congressman Hakeem Jeffries put it this way. He said, Donald Trump is like the Wizard of Oz. He creates all this imagery, this chaos, this crisis, this confusion. He's right there. Trump is actually every character in The Wizard of Oz. His bone spurs make him a cowardly lion. Kids in cages proves he doesn't have a heart. His spelling shows he doesn't have a brain. And he is actually the subject of a witch hunt. There's... There's no place... There's no place like Mar-a-Lago. There's no place like Mar-a-Lago. And my thighs won't let me click my heels. I don't. I don't. Just, I'll take a mulligan there.